it seems like everywhere you turn these days, everyone's talking about large language models. Yeah, definitely seems like it. ChatGPT, Mistral, DeepSeek, hmm. um, they're making headlines constantly. And you can't deny they're having a massive impact on everything mm -hmm. from you know, business operations yeah. to even how we access information. It's a really fundamental shift. Isn't it? It feels like it. It's not just a passing fad. This is something really significant. Absolutely. Yeah. It feels like we're witnessing the very beginning of something huge. Well, it and does. Yeah. And it goes beyond just the technology itself. It's about global strategy and yeah. who holds the reins of this powerful technology. And that makes you think about a country like South Korea. Mm hmm you know, they have this strong reputation for tech innovation. Right. They've always been at the forefront, haven't they? Yeah. So are they poised to be a leader in this AI language model revolution? Mm -hmm. Well, the source we're diving into today raises some interesting questions about that. Okay. It's an opinion piece titled The Age of Large Language Models, Why Korea Needs a Decentralized AI Revolution. And it's by Lee Kang-hoon. Okay. He's the director of the Korea Artificial Intelligence Research Institute and CEO of Quantum Aya. And he suggests that despite all this global momentum, South Korea hasn't really matched that with a comparable national effort I see. to develop its own Korean language, LLM. So they might be facing a challenge here. And his perspective is especially valuable, I think, because of his roles at the Korea Artificial Intelligence Research Institute and Quantum Eye. So right. the institute was founded in April 2018 with this very clear mission to advance AI technology and you know make the public more aware of its potential. Uh -huh. And he's not just an observer. He's really in the thick of it. So his concerns point to a potential gap in Korea's long-term strategy when it comes to technology. So the aim of this deep dive is to help you listening and really grasp why someone like Lee Kang-hoon, yeah. with you know his deep understanding of AI in Korea, yeah. believes they're lagging behind in this particular area. What are the underlying issues and what solution does he propose? We want to paint a clear picture of what this means for Korea's future in technology and their position in the global AI landscape. Absolutely. A crucial discussion to be having right now. Let's start with the current environment. Mm -hmm. What's the state of AI language model development in South Korea right now? And what are the major roadblocks as the author sees them? I think what's really striking in the author's analysis is this contrast he draws between the widespread global development of LLMs. You know, it's happening everywhere. Right. Yeah. And then you look at the activity within South Korea at a national level, and it seems more limited. Mm. He points out that while there is progress, it's mostly happening within the research labs of a few big corporations or government-funded institutions. So not a complete standstill, no. but more like development happening in silos. Yeah, exactly. It's uh. not that coordinated national effort that you see in other places. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpack that a bit. Hmm. What are the potential downsides of this centralized approach? Why does the author feel this isn't the best way for South Korea to develop a strong national AI language model? Well, I think the biggest concern is about control. Okay. The decision-making authority and who ultimately benefits when only a few organizations are calling the shots. Hmm. You run the risk that the benefits of this incredibly powerful technology won't be shared across society. Right. And that leads to some pretty important questions. Yeah, like who gets to shape this technology? Exactly. Who profits from it? Uh. And does it really serve the entire nation's interests? Yeah, it's about fairness, isn't it? And making sure that technological progress benefits everyone. It's a really important point, And it makes you question whether this kind of crucial technology should be controlled by just a select few. Yeah, it's a big question with no easy answers. So if this centralized model has these potential downsides, what alternative does Lee Kang-hoon suggest? He mentions DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. So for those hearing this term for the first time, can you explain what a DAO is all about? Sure. Think of it this way. A DAO is like a company or an organization. Mm. But instead of having a CEO or a board of directors calling the shots, all the rules are actually encoded on a blockchain. Okay. And a blockchain you can think of as a kind of digital ledger that's shared and tamper proof. Right. Everyone in the DAO can see it. So instead of having this traditional hierarchy, decisions are made collectively by the participants. So it's more democratic in a way. Exactly. And participants typically have voting rights based on their stake in the DAO or how much they contribute to it. I see. And here's a key part. The results of these votes are often automatically executed through what are called smart contracts. Okay. These are basically agreements written in code that can execute themselves automatically. Wow. So no room for human error or manipulation there. 
Yeah, the idea is to make everything fair and prevent any single person or group from taking control. It's like a digitally governed collective where everything's out in the open. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Now, here's where it gets really interesting for our listeners. How does the author suggest using this DAO model to build a national AI language model for South Korea? What are the specific advantages he sees? Well, he believes that there are some major potential benefits. Okay. First, he talks about the power of collective intelligence. Mm -hmm. By bringing together lots of different people through a DAO, researchers, Mm -hmm. developers, linguists, data providers. The real mix of expertise. You tap into a much wider range of knowledge and ideas than you would if it was just one organization. Mm -hmm. It becomes this collaborative environment that could lead to a much more creative and effective language model. It's like the wisdom of the crowd, but for AI. Exactly. And the second benefit is that DAOs are inherently transparent. Right. This creates a more sustainable platform because it's not controlled by a single company or government body. The AI technology can develop as something that benefits everyone, a public good that can evolve over time. So the focus shifts from private gain to a broader societal benefit. Yeah. And that's a crucial distinction, I think. What other key advantages does he highlight? He also emphasizes incentives. Okay. In a DAO structure, people who contribute valuable resources, whether it's data code research, Mm -hmm. they can be rewarded for their efforts fairly and transparently. And how does that work in practice? Often through the DAO's own digital tokens or other mechanisms that are built into the system. I see. This can attract top talent and keep them engaged, which is essential for a project like this that needs long-term commitment. Makes sense. So it's about creating a system where everyone has a stake in the success of the project. Yeah, and the ultimate goal is to make sure that these technological advancements benefit the entire nation, not just a small group. It's a very compelling vision of a collaborative and incentivized approach. It is, but building a cutting-edge AI language model is a huge undertaking. Oh, absolutely. It requires enormous resources you need, Bazit. You need computing power data expertise. Right, so how does a decentralized organization manage all of that? The author acknowledges that developing a national LLM isn't easy. Yeah. It needs significant investment, especially for things like the necessary GPU infrastructure and getting the best AI researchers on board. So where does the money come from? His solution is a hybrid model that combines the strengths of different approaches. Okay. So initially you would leverage the resources and organization of public-private consortiums. Uh They can provide the initial capital and build the foundation. And then the DAO comes in. Right. But the idea is to have that decentralized governance framework built in from the start. So as the project grows, the community can get more involved. So it's like a blend of traditional structures for the initial heavy lifting but with a built-in mechanism for broader participation and oversight as things progress. Precisely, you get the efficiency of established organizations at the beginning, but also ensure that the development deployment and even the ethical considerations are guided by the community. This seems to go beyond just technological progress. Mm. The author sees this as a crucial moment for South Korea. Absolutely. He frames it as an opportunity for South Korea to not just catch up in the global AI race, Mm. but to really lead the way by pioneering a new paradigm for AI development, one that prioritizes democratization and inclusivity through DAO governance. So it's about setting a new standard, not just following the current trend. Yeah, it's not just about creating a Korean language model. It's about establishing a model for a sustainable AI ecosystem where everyone benefits and has a voice. What's the main takeaway for our listeners, what does Lee Kang Hoon want to see happen? His call to action is very clear. He believes that creating this DAO powered national AI language model is a collective responsibility. Hmm. It can't be left to a single company or institution. It requires active participation from all sectors, the government, private industry, academia. Everyone needs to be on board. It's a national effort. Exactly. And he emphasizes the urgency of seizing this opportunity. He paints this vision of a future where AI innovation is driven by shared ownership and participation, where everyone benefits from the advancements. It's about moving away from concentrated control to shared progress. Yeah, that's the core of his argument. So let's recap for our listeners. The core argument here is that South Korea risks falling behind in this crucial global development of AI language models if they don't have a significant unified national initiative. Mm -hmm. The current approach, which relies on a few major players, has limitations when it comes to broad societal impact and making sure everyone benefits. 
And Lee Kang-hoon offers a really compelling alternative. Right. Embracing a decentralized model, specifically using the power of DAOs. And the key takeaway is understanding the transformative potential of these DAOs in reshaping how national AI resources are developed and managed. By encouraging collaboration, ensuring transparency through blockchain technology, and distributing decision-making power among a wider community, mm -hmm. a DAO-based framework could lead to a more innovative, sustainable, and ultimately more equitable AI ecosystem for South Korea. It's a vision of an AI future that serves everyone, not just a select few. That's the goal. So given how fast AI technology is advancing globally, it really makes you think if this model of decentralized governance is so promising for developing national AI language models, what other crucial sectors beyond language processing could benefit from similar decentralized structures, mm. you know, to ensure wider access participation and a more equitable distribution of technological progress? It's a question worth pondering. Absolutely food for thought. It's a fascinating area to explore. And as AI continues to evolve, these kinds of conversations are going to become even more important. I completely agree. We're just at the beginning of this. Yeah, just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to come. So much more. And it's going to be exciting to see how it all unfolds. Definitely exciting times ahead. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into the world of AI and DAOs. It's been a really insightful conversation. It has. Thanks for having me. And for our listeners, keep those questions coming and stay tuned for more deep dives into the most compelling issues shaping our world. Until next time. Until next time.